Hey everybody, my name is Brandon. Welcome back to Cine Fashions, where we talk all things media. And happy Halloween if you are watching this on the day this video goes live. So excited to go out trick-or-treating with my kids tonight. But today, before we get to all that, we're gonna do episode four of Shelf Space, and we're gonna look at three more boutique horror releases to see if they are in fact worth the space they're taking up on my shelf. Today we will look at Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Triangle, and Lake Mungo. So we have an Umbrella Entertainment release, a, another Second Sight release, and then a Dark Sky Films release. So let's not waste any time at all. Let's dive right into episode four of Shelf Space. So as I mentioned in episode three, if you watched that video, I'm still trying to work my way through this sickness. I feel a lot better, but I'm still coughing and have a runny nose and all that. So my voice is probably a little screwy. So I apologize for that, but thank you for bearing with me. But anyway, let's start with the Dark Sky Films release on 4K of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre from 1974, directed by Toby Hooper. This is a film that I have logged a lot on Letterboxd over the last decade. I love this. This movie. It is a horror favorite of mine. Every time I watch it, I appreciate it even more. This is a film, obviously, I don't really need to talk too much about the movie itself, right? Like, everybody knows what the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is, but it is a, a group of friends going on a uh, vacation in the deep woods of Texas when they stumble across Leatherface and his family of cannibals, and that's really what we're dealing with here. But this is a, an all-timer, so you know it already, and it's a classic for a reason. Like, this is one that holds up now even 50 years after its initial release, which is mind-boggling. This was actually released in theaters recently for its 50th anniversary. Unfortunately, I did not get a chance to see it, but if you did, let me know how that experience was because I imagine it was great. But watching this one on 4K, some of the things I really appreciated this time through is our very first introduction of Leatherface is so well done. We get instantly, he pops on screen and then it's a, right, a, a mallet hit or a hammer hit right to the back of the head. It is just extremely extremely violent and brutal. And that's our first introduction. And then the character who he hits is just convulsing on the floor. It is so messed up, but it's played perfectly. And then our second, uh, kind of our reintroduction of Leatherface a little bit later in the movie is him putting a woman on a meat hook with her back. Like it is so brutal. It really cements Leatherface right from the get go as just this truly horrific character. And that persists throughout the entire film. I love the character of Leatherface. It is just done so well. On top of that, I think the acting in this is great as I, you know, anyone would say. I love the family though. That's what really stood out to me. This because it's played so over the top with how ridiculous this family is, I think what really helps cement them and ground them in reality is that cinema verte that's it's so well known for, that shooting style, where you have that a lot of handheld shots in this. And that gravity really helps it make it feel more realistic, which is something I absolutely love about this movie. Even though this family is so over the top cannibalistic and ridiculous, it still feels like something that could really be happening. And I think that's why it, it holds up so well over time. It doesn't feel like a product of its age. So I, I love this one. Talking about the 4K release from Dark Sky Films, I think they did a really good job here. So keep in mind, this movie was shot in 16 millimeter, right, back in the day. And so it's only going to ever looks so good, but what they've managed to do here is maintain that gritty, grainy feel of the original. And it comes in part with the grain structure in this. I think they did a great job of maintaining that. It's not uh, done away with with DNR or anything like that. And so kudos to them for keeping this feeling like a film, a low budget, dirty, dark horror film from the 1970s. So I, I really appreciate the transfer on this. On the audio side, this disc presents a Dolby Atmos track. And so I I wanted to give it a try, even though it's not the original, you know, audio that you would have heard in theaters. I still wanted to give it a try. I'll mention the original audio is still on here if you prefer that, but I really appreciated the Dolby Atmos on this because it did a great job of separating out the chainsaw sounds. The chainsaw was so much louder than anything else in this film, which is appropriate, right? When you turn on a chainsaw, it kind of drowns out everything else around you, and that's exactly what happens here. And because of that, it helps make the chainsaw feel like its own character, which 
I think is really important in a film like this, where, you know, it's, it's a titular character in the film, right? The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So it just makes sense. And I think it works really well. The Dolby Atmos on this, I thought, sounded really good. So overall, I think this disc from Dark Sky is an awesome release. That said, there is also a full-length documentary on here as well. So, I mean, obviously I did not have time to watch through this documentary on this time through, but I've heard great things about it, and so I'm very excited to go back to this disc and revisit this. But yeah, just an awesome release from Dark Sky. So I highly recommend this if you are a fan of the film. But that said... I own this on DVD as well, the, the steelbook I showed in a haul video not too long ago, and I thought it looked great there too, even on my big 120-inch projector. So you don't need this movie in 4K, but I think it is great in 4K. But if you have the DVD, that's probably sufficient, especially if you have the, the newly restored uh, transfer from Dark Sky Films, that specific DVD. I think it looks great. So this is a movie that you can watch it on virtually any format, and it's still going to feel genuine and feel re uh, feel like it's supposed to have felt back when you, it would have been watched in theaters back in the 1970s. So I love this release, though, and I highly recommend it if you are a big fan of this film like I am. So I am going to give The Texas Chainsaw Massacre from 1974... Four out of five stars. And I think I've made it pretty clear already that is Texas Chainsaw Massacre from Dark Sky Films worth the shelf space? 100%. This is an excellent release with a full, like I said, a full documentary included as well. So definitely pick this one up if you are a big fan of this film. Let's move on to our second film today, another one from Second Sight. I talked about It Follows in the episode three. So today we'll talk about Lake Mungo from 2008, directed by Joel Anderson. So one thing to keep in mind is this is a found footage film. However, it came before the found footage craze that Paranormal Activity kicked off in 2009. Yes, I know Paranormal Activity was technically released in 2007, but that was a limited release and it didn't really get big until 2009. So this came before that, which is really interesting. It was it feels a little bit ahead of its time because of that. Uh, now with this film, we are following this family. It's done in almost a true crime docu-series style where it's a talking head documentary mixed in with found footage from the family, be it, you know, the paranormal activity style where you have cameras in the house trying to find activity that happens overnight, or even in some spots, uh, footage that's filmed on a like Motorola Razor from back in the day, if you know what I'm talking about, on a camera phone from back in the mid 2000s. So the, the different found footage styles you get in this, I think is what really helps make this one feel really unique compared to some other films that you might find in this same genre. The setup here is pretty familiar though. We have a family of four. The daughter ends up dying tragically. I think she was like 16 years old, so she dies much too young. And then at back at the house, that was happened while they were on vacation. So then back at the house, they start finding some paranormal activity, or at least what they believe is paranormal activity. And so it's going to pick up from there. What's interesting about this film is how little of it I remembered. Now, mind you, I watched this for the first time back on DVD back in like 2009, probably, I, I believe it was, because this was one of the, I think it was an After Dark Horror Fest release, because I was going through a bunch of them at that time, 2009, 2010, and I loved it at that point. I thought it was so good, and I do think this is still a good movie. However, it doesn't quite hold up as well as I hoped it would, but that doesn't mean that it felt any less unique watching it through this time. In fact, I probably appreciate appreciated it even more now than I did back then, given the filming styles that are done here. So, of course, this is a brand new Blu-ray. This is uh, from Second Sight, so it's a UK release. However, it is a region-free Blu-ray. Just note that, so I was able to watch this on my normal Blu-ray player. But due to the filming style, this can only ever really look so good on Blu-ray because not only are we filming sh things from a, a family's a home video cameras from back in the mid-2000s, a lot of this, but we also are using things like cell phones from the mid-2000s. So the footage is only ever going to look so good no matter what you do to it. So the Blu-ray, though I think it looks fine for what it is, it doesn't look that notably better than what I remember the DVD looking like back in 2009. So the reason to pick this one up though is for the new special features that are included on here because there are quite a few. There's audio commentary tracks on here plus behind the scenes interviews and footage, things like that. So quite a lot in terms of the special features, which is really the reason to grab this. But if you're not already a 
fan of this film, check out the DVD. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing you can probably get that for significantly cheaper than the Second Sight Blu-ray at this point. But what I'm surprised I forgot about it over the years is the twists and turns that this movie takes. And I don't quite understand why it does some of them because it takes you down one path and then completely swerves you just to later on put you back onto that same path. So I don't quite know what the point of the swerve was and obviously I'm not giving any spoilers. So I just don't know why you do that. I, I guess it's just a choice by the director and you know it is what it is but I don't know that I loved that aspect of it this time through. The other part of this is just how incredibly dark this movie is. It goes places that hit you a lot differently as an older individual with a family than it may have done me as a, you know, a 20, early 20 something back in the early 2000 or mid to uh, late 2000s, I guess it would be. And so it's just a lot darker than I remembered it being. And I don't think that's a negative at all. I just didn't, I'm surprised I didn't remember that. It's a very sad film overall. If you really stop and take a look at everything that's going on here, the life that this 16 year old girl had to lead, leading up to her death is extremely sad and horrific. And so the places this thing goes is a lot deeper than maybe you might expect in a found footage film of this ilk. So I think that's what really makes this movie unique alongside the fact that they use all these different styles of found footage. And so that's why I think this is absolutely worth watching. However, I don't know that I loved it as much this time through. So while it's worth watching, and I think this Second Sight Blu-ray is absolutely worth it if you are a fan of the film, I don't know that you need to run out and buy this specifically if you have not already seen this one. So I am going to give Lake Mongo from 2008 three out of five stars. And is it worth the shelf space? For me, it is because I'm a big fan of this genre and I want to get through these special features at some point. So I'm very happy to own this one. But for others, I don't think it will be. I think you can probably stick to the DVD on this one and be just as satisfied. Last but not least today is a brand new release from Umbrella Entertainment. I actually haven't even shown this one in a haul video yet because it just came in and the night it arrived here, I knew I had to pop it in. So this is Triangle from 2009, directed by Christopher Smith. This is another movie that I watched way back in 2009 when it was new. I remember scrolling through some forums and always looking for like underrated hidden horror gems and this was one that popped up and I watched it back then and absolutely loved it. And so when I saw this uh, Blu-ray release from Umbrella, I knew I had to upgrade. So Triangle is low-key a slasher film when you think about it, but it mixes in elements of Groundhog Day with it. So it's just a super unique film, which I know I said about the last movie as well, but it's really true here too. So we are following this group of people that is led by our main actress there, Melissa George, who I just talked about recently here on the channel because she played the matriarch in the Amityville Horror remake. I think she's awesome here also. I think this one, I, yeah, this was a couple years later from Amityville Horror, but still great in this film. But anyway, they are setting a sail off on this yacht. When it, a storm arrives and they, cap, and they capsize, I believe is the right term, right? It flips over. Well, then this big giant ship pops up out of nowhere and they get on board and that's where things start taking a weird turn because someone is hunting them down. And of course, I will leave it there because no spoilers as we go through this, but talking about this one without spoilers makes it very difficult to talk about, so I will be very vague as I talk through this. But Christopher Smith, the director director on this one noted in the special features that Triangle is the movie that everyone always talks about from his filmography, and I totally understand why. But that said, he also directed Black Death, which I feel like has a ton of uh, fans for that one as well. One I still need to see, but I really want to check that one out now after revisiting this and enjoying it so much. Fortunately, with Triangle, this one holds up really well. It doesn't, again, feel like it's of its time at all, which is super important in a movie like this because you're not gonna get like cell phone coverage that just isn't working and, and things along those lines. Like you're not gonna get those silly tropes that you normally find in slasher movies. Instead, you have a group of individuals who are very intelligent, 
doing their best to make their way through the situation, not making stupid decisions really as they go through it. It's just they're in a really tough situation. And I think that's why this one stands out on its own quite a bit compared to some others in the genre. I love this movie. I think the acting on this is phenomenal. It actually has Liam Hemsworth in this. So Chris Hemsworth's brother is uh, one of the main characters in this also. And I think he does a great job. Uh, but I really, I just like the characters. I think their dynamic is super interesting especially Melissa George's character because she kind of unravels, uh, her character unravels a bit as the movie plays on. And so you get to know more and more about her as the movie progresses. And the life she leads is fascinating to uncover. And I think that really helps play into kind of the what is going to happen next aspect of this, which really, this is the type of movie that once you've seen it one time, you kind of know where things are going, but it holds up on repeat viewings because there are so many different things that you can uncover throughout like the timeline of the movie is a big aspect of this. And you get to uncover that more and more on repeat viewing. So this is one that I will definitely watch again in the future. And if you haven't seen it for whatever reason, I highly recommend it. I'm sure you can get the DVD for really cheap, but the Blu-ray on this I think is absolutely worth it. There's a scene in here where I talked about that the yacht capsizes. That scene, it was making me anxious because of the audio on it. It was great. There is a 5.1, I think it's a DTS HD master audio track, it is. And it is an upgrade from the DVD for sure. And it sounds spectacular. Like I said, it was making me anxious watching it, which is what it's supposed to do, right? Uh, the characters are in, are in an extremely uh, stressful situation and it puts you as the viewer in a, a similar situation with the music and how it's played out there and the sound effects and everything. It just sounds awesome. That was really the moment where it stood out to me that the audio was notably better, but still, I think it's worth it for, for that alone. Plus the picture picture upgrade is a significantly better than what we have on the DVD release of this. This is a film, it holds up on repeat viewings. You can watch it over and over again and pick up on new things. The Blu-ray release from Umbrella has a bunch of new special features on it. There's deleted scenes. There's an interview with the director. I think that was about 12 minutes long. I did watch through that and the deleted scenes. And the deleted scenes absolutely are, <laughs> they, it makes sense why they were deleted. They add nothing to the movie. But the uh, director interview, I think, was really well done. So I highly recommend this movie and this release if you've not seen it. You know, make the blind buy if you feel so obliged because I think you're not going to be disappointed. I thoroughly love this movie. So I am going to give Triangle from 2009 four out of five stars, which seems to be the theme of the movies I've watched for this Halloween season season. And obviously, is it worth the shelf space? It absolutely is. Highly recommend this release from Umbrella. All right, so three movies, two of them are actually overseas releases, but they're both region-free discs, so always a good thing there. But I would love to hear from you guys down in the comments. Have you seen any of these three movies? And if so, what do you recommend to others? Uh, do you like them as much as I do? Did I Was I a little harsh on Lake Mungo? I still think it's a really good movie that is worth watching. I just don't know that it's as good as I remembered it being. But I would love to hear from you guys down in the comments below, so leave any and all thoughts down there. And again, happy Halloween to you and yours. I hope you have a wonderful evening if you're going out or if you're staying in. I hope you get to watch some awesome horror movies. But with that said, guys, thank you so much for making it all the way to the end here. And before you go, I'll just encourage you all to consume some media today. Thank you again for watching, and I will catch you all next time.